Getting your data into Microsoft Azure in the storage account could be a problem if you either A, have a really, really sucky internet connection, like your network connection's a crawl, or you have just a ton of data, or both. So how do you get it up into the cloud? Well, Microsoft's solution is pretty much what you would expect. You ship it. You sh actually put stuff on a hard drive, maybe kind of like this, probably not like this. This is like a consumer hard drive. It is eight terabytes though. You put it on a hard drive or hard drives and you ship it to Microsoft's data center. That's how it works. It's called an import export job. And you can start the process in the Azure portal, but then it's gonna go all offline using traditional old old world stuff to get your <laughs> data to Microsoft. I for, for some reason, I just love the idea that to get your data to the cloud, the best way when you have a ton of stuff is via the mail. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Let's check it out. There are actually two options you have for exporting your data or importing your data to the cloud. The one we're going to look at here in this nugget is called the import export, and this is using your own drives. You supply the drives, you ship them to Microsoft, yada, yada, yada. Another option would be the Azure Data Box disk, and this solution is Microsoft's drives. They supply the drives. We'll talk about that in the next nugget, but for now we're going to focus on the import export, using your own drives to get your data into the cloud. So in what situation would you use this? I mean, the first use case is obvious. You need to move your data, lots of data to the cloud. And it doesn't have to just be to the cloud. It can be from the cloud. Maybe you need to distribute content to your remote sites. You could also back up a ton of data or restore a ton of data for data recovery. Okay, cool. Now, how do we do it? What's the process like? Well, like I said before, it starts in the Azure portal. Now, hold on a second, real quick, disclaimer. This is only for blobs and files. And that's just for importing. For export, when you pull data from the cloud, only for blobs. Exporting files is not supported. So anyways, when we're talking this big bulk service, we're looking at blobs and files. Keep that in mind. So let's focus on the import job first. You want to get your data to the cloud. Step one, you need to figure out what data you're going to import, how many drives you're going to need, which Azure will support both hard disk drives, magnetic drives, and SSDs, which blob, the blob location. Once you have this information figured out, now we turn to the Azure portal. Back home at portal.azure.com, we're going to be looking at a new service we haven't seen quite yet. It's called the Import-Export Service. To find that, we'll go to the search bar at the top here, and I'll type in imports. should pull it up right there, import-export jobs. Jump in there. Part of importing or exporting your data is creating this job in Azure. So we'll go ahead and click Create. And then you have your basic settings. Import or Export. We're looking at Import for now. We're going to name the job. I'll just name it Snail Mail. Subscription, NC Beard Co. Resource Group. I'll select my current one. I just named it Data Transfer. Notice we're kind of creating a resource, aren't we? I'll click OK. Now for the job details. Now notice we have an alert at the top. What is that? This is the next step. We need to download this tool right here the WA import export tool and we're going to generate a JRN file which is just a, a journal file and then we'll upload that sucker right here. Now this WA import export tool is a command line tool and it helps prepare and copy the data to those disk drives. It also encrypts your data using BitLocker and then it will generate that journal file you need as you're creating this import job. So you do need to download this tool run this and copy the data to your drive before you can actually create this import export job. But I wanted to show you this first because this will give you the link to get there. So if I just clicked on that, it takes me right to it. Oh, Surface Pro 6. This is not an ad. <laughs> and you can download it from here. And that would be step two. You'll use the WA import export tool to prep your data. And then we can go to the Azure portal and create that job. And pretending we actually uploaded that journal file, We'll then select our storage account destination, which I'll just say this is mine here. And then you choose your drop-off location. Unfortunately, it won't let me go any further without having that JRN file. I tried to fake one, didn't let me. And once you've completed this step, you'll go in and tell them, hey, this is where you return my drives I just sent you. And then that job is created. And during the process of creating that job, you tell them where to send your drives back once they receive them. And they also give you the address to ship them to as well. And that's the next step is you ship your drives. And when you ship the drives, you know, you'll have your delivery tracking number you get from the carrier you use, whether it be UPS or FedEx or whatever. And you will put that information into the export job or the import job in Azure. These drives hop on a truck, 
They are shipped to the Azure Data Center, and Azure receives the drives and uploads them to your cloud. And once they've been uploaded, they ship all your stuff back to you. So that's the import process. The export process, good news, is actually not too different. In fact, the only difference really is that you're not going to use the uh, WA import export tool because you'll be shipping empty drives to Microsoft because you're exporting data. Also, it's going to be only blobs. So same scenario, you're going to decide, hey, what data? Which blob am I going to be exporting? Do I have enough drives? And you ship them empty to Microsoft. You don't do any prep, really. But you do go into the Azure portal and create that job. So in the Azure portal, under basic settings, ah, no, discarded settings, I would do export from Azure instead. Click OK. This one might actually let me get further because <laughs> I don't have to upload that journal file. And then I select which blobs to export. Um, right now, I don't have anything in that account, so I'll just select all. But you can see you can select these things. And then I put in my return carrier information, just like we would with the import. Except Microsoft's going to be shipping you data that you requested to your data center. I hope this has been informative for you. And I'd like to thank you for viewing.